What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. So this is the fourth part in my series looking at the built-in Wi-Fi and radio capabilities of the camera. And in this video, we're going to actually be connecting the camera to a Wi-Fi network it and pairing it with Canon's EOS utility. Now, the Wi-Fi connectivity or most of the functionality of the Wi-Fi connectivity is a purely software feature on many of Canon's mirrorless cameras such as the R3, R6, and R7. However, not all of these cameras support the same options and capabilities. So for example, the R3, R5, and R6 all support uploading to an FTP server, but the R7 doesn't. And instead, the R7 supports printing directly to a Canon printer, which is something that the R5 doesn't support, and 6 and 3 as well. In any event, I own and shoot with the EOS R5, and so that's where these videos are focused. Additionally, it's what I use for testing and demonstration. So if you use a different EOS R series camera, you may find that your camera is slightly different in terms of functionality, or how it goes about doing things, or lacks certain features that I show in these videos. So in this video, we're going to talk about what I'm going to logically separate into two processes. First is connecting to a Wi-Fi network, in which case we're going to talk a little bit about some network stuff that you probably shouldn't have to deal with as a photographer, but maybe isn't so terribly bad that you do given the way the camera works, including choosing the right frequency band, so whether you should be on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, as well as IP address setup for the camera, which is how it communicates on the wireless network. The second part of this, logically, is connecting to Canon's EOS utility. Now, Canon doesn't separate these things in the camera. You pick what service you want to connect through, and you go through the process of connecting to the wireless network and then the service. However, I'm separating these two things into logical or logically separate things because the connecting to a Wi-Fi network part is the same regardless of whether you choose to connect to a smartphone using Canon's Camera Connect app, a desktop or laptop using Canon's EOS utility, the FT, an FTP server, a printer, or Canon's cloud file or image service. So let's start talking about Wi-Fi setup. Now there are a couple of prerequisites here. Actually, there's one prerequisite for the whole thing that I am not going to cover in this video, which is installing the EOS Utility app on your computer. I'm going to make the assumption that you have already installed it and work from that. However, you can install it. It's found on the CDs that came with your camera, or you can download the latest version from your regional Canon website, punch in your camera's model name, hit support, downloads, it's easy to find. And in any way, note, the real prerequisite that I want to talk about for this is getting your camera's MAC address. There's a, a, it's not strictly necessary, but I make the recommendation because it's the only identifier that's consistently shown throughout the entire process depending uh, with, you know, with on EOS utility side of things. So to get your camera's MAC address, you are going to go to the uh, Wi-Fi blue or the network one menu, you're going to go to Wi-Fi settings, you're going to go to Mac address, and that will show your camera's Mac address. So before we get started with the whole Wi-Fi setup thing, we do need to make sure a couple of things are enabled on the camera. So Wi-Fi has to be enabled. So Wi-Fi settings set Wi-Fi to enabled. The camera must not be in airplane mode. It set turns the radio off. So airplane mode should be off. And with that, uh, and Bluetooth, it doesn't matter because we're not using it in this case. But with that said, we can start the pairing process. So we are going to hit the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection menu. And because in this video, we are connecting to Canon's EOS utility, we are going to select the icon that looks like a computer or a laptop as opposed to a smartphone. It says remote control EOS utility. And then we are going to, well, get prompted in my case for select a device to, uh, for connection. If you've never connected to any device with the EOS utility or with this camera, then it will skip this and will take you straight to the adding a device process. However, if you have connected to something, you will see this screen. If your thing is our, if you've already done all of this, and in which case I don't know why you're watching the video, but if you've already done all this, then your device that you've connected to is in the list. You can pick it and it will connect, uh, reconnect automatically. However, the thing I'm connecting to, which is my laptop, is not in the list, so we're going to hit add dev a device to connect to. It's going to then search for wireless networks to connect to. Now, I am very quickly going to switch, hit switch network. 
And the reason for that is I have already connected to my wireless network and the camera is very quick to, if you don't hit switch network there and it's on a wireless network that it is already connected to, the camera will wait a few seconds and then automatically do all of the network connection or reconnect to the network without prompting you for anything. But for the sake of this, we want to see how to connect to a wireless network. So we're going to hit switch network and go through it. Now, if the network that you've previously connected to ha isn't available, then it will not automatically be able to connect to it, obviously, and you'll have to do this anyway. So on the select a network page, you'll see a number of options before uh, to go through. We'll start at the top, refresh. So if your wireless network does not show up in the list of wireless networks displayed on the camera, it could be potentially because when the camera was looking for wireless networks, it happened to do that between the intervals that the network periodically uh, displays or announces that it's there. So if you don't see your network in the list, you can hit refresh and potentially it will show up. It could also be that it's you're too far out of range. One of the things that I have found with the R5 is that the range in the wireless capabilities is not is especially great. The next option is camera access point mode. Camera access point mode makes your camera act as the wireless network's access point. So instead of having to have a separate net wireless access point or wireless router, the camera does the, the wireless base station functionality. Now this is obviously great if you are working in the field, you're out in a park somewhere and you don't want to have to lug a wireless network or a wireless router out with you and a power supply for all of it, but you still want to be able to connect to the camera with your smartphone or whatever to remote control it. This is the mode that you will want. And we're, while we're not going to do anything with that in this video, I will be showing how to Promote a Bluetooth connection from a smartphone to a standalone wireless network using this capability of the camera in a future video. Connect with WPS. So WPS stands for Wi-Fi Protected Setup, and it is a essentially one button mechanism to connect to a wireless network without having to go through the process of entering a password. So you select that on your wireless access point or router. There's, it's, if, assuming it supports WPS and WPS and is enabled, there will be a button that you hit and they will do their thing talking to each other to figure out how to connect to the network. After WPS, you will find a list of the wireless networks that the camera has found. So these will be displayed in the format uh, that follows. So the first thing on the line will be the wireless network's name or SSID. In my case, my network is Valhalla. You can see it's there. That's the first part of the line. The second thing on the line will be either a lock or where that lock is on my networks, there won't be a lock. That indicates that the network is encrypted and that you will need a password to connect to that network. So my networks are encrypted as most networks should be. The final thing on the line is a number followed by the letters CH, and this stands for channel. And this tells you which channels the network is, or is communicating on. And I will come back to that in a second. The final entry in the menu is manual settings. So this is Canon's covering your bases. Some network administrators do not have their or have their network set up to hide the SSID, so they don't publicly announce the SSID. In those cases, and maybe this is how you've got your network set up, you will need to go into manual settings and enter the SSID or network name for your access point here manually. And then the process is essentially the same as it is if you had a publicly announced network. So channels, frequency bands. If you saw the last video where I talked about performance of the wireless network on the R5, you will have seen that I found in my testing that 2.4 gigahertz, even though the camera doesn't sync at as high of a link speed, transferred data significantly faster than when the camera was connected at five gigahertz. I tried this with both direct line of sight to the access point, as well as where I usually have it on the other side of essentially a wall. So, my recommendation is, of course, not to use 5 gigahertz if you can avoid it, given the performance that I have seen with the internal radios on the camera. So we want to pick the 2.4 gigahertz network. 
So how do you do that? Well, answer is easy. You have to look at the channel numbers. Now, I think this is something that maybe Canon could have made a lot easier for us if they wanted to. Uh, most devices that support multiple frequency bands, like, like our camera, you just connect to the network and it picks whichever band it supports. This is true of your smartphone, your laptop, many things like that. However, uh, in fact, many other camera brands will automatically pick channels. However, given the performance per disparity that I saw with the camera, with this camera, at least on my network, having to pick this manually is almost a blessing in disguise because you can actually get a higher performance connection if you pick the right setting. So how do you know which frequency band you are on based on channel number? Well, the answer to that is if the channel number is between 1 and 14 inclusively, then you are on the 2.4 gigahertz network and that is what you want to use. If the channel number is higher than 32, then you are on the 5 gigahertz networks and for this camera, at least and based on my testing, if you're using the built-in Wi-Fi capabilities, that's what you kind of want to avoid. So I am going to pick channel 11 because I want my camera on the 2.4 gigahertz network. Of course, the next thing the camera is gonna ask you is to enter the network's password. If you've already connected to the network as I have, it will already have your password saved, which is a nice feature. I am going to just hit OK here. I'm not going to show the process. Now, at this point, we have connected to the wireless network. If this was a wired thing, this would be having completed the equivalent of plugging the network cable in. However, we haven't actually completed all of the network setup, so we can't communicate with anything. So the first thing the camera is asking for is us to deal with setting up an IP address using IPv4. You have two options here. One is auto settings, the other is manual settings. So for 99% of the networks that you connect to, auto settings will take care of what you need. Check the radio button for auto settings, hit OK. It'll talk to the network hardware and it will figure out what everything needs to be. The second option is manual settings. Now you will know you need manual settings either because you are the network administrator and you know that you need to do manual settings for your camera, or when you came to the site or office or whatever location you were shooting in and asked about wireless access, they gave you a piece of paper that had IP addresses and various configuration information on, on it that they told you you needed to add. Generally, that's going to be super rare. However, that's what that's there for. So in most cases, like my network here, I'm going to take auto, or you're going to take auto settings. I'm going to take auto settings, and we're going to move on to the next question, which is whether or not your camera should use TCP IP version 6. So this is the newer version of the addressing protocol that we just configured. And you have two options here, enabled and disabled. Here's the deal. Going forward, TCP IP version 6 at some point is going to be a requirement for connecting to the internet or connecting your device to things. We have run out of IPv4 addresses. There are no, the, the, the consortiums of all of the things that do, do, deals with the global naming and numbering have realized that this is a problem and they have developed a solution and the solution is IPv6. It is the future. Now, that being said, I have found, at least on my camera, on my network. Now, my network is fully dual-homed, which means that it has both full IPv4 and IPv6 capabilities. Every other device that I connect to my network will almost instantly get an IPv4 or IPv6 address, or I should say, get both. My camera is a little flaky, and I'm not quite sure why. So this is what I found. Well, let me just start with the recommendation. The recommendation is leave this at disabled unless you absolutely know you need it. What I have found is when I enable this, it can cause the camera to take longer to get a network address and set up, which is not bad, but it's a little annoying. I've also found that it can, it can cause certain things to just not work right. So when I'm trying to connect to an FTP server, if I have IPv6 enabled, the camera, for some reason, won't connect to an IPv4 network or FTP server. 
EOS utility, it works fine. In theory, it should just work fine. But for whatever reason, I have had issues with it. So recommendation, leave this at disabled unless you absolutely know you need to enable it. So with that taken care of, we are now at the point where the camera is asking us to start pairing with our device. And this is the point where we're going to need to have EOS Utility open and running, or at least running on our computer. So I'm going to hit OK, and the camera is going to make a note that it is connecting two things. And on my computer, as you see in this now, I have received a notification that says that Canon EOS Utility has detected a camera on the network, and would I like to connect to it? And I just spent so long talking about that that I completely missed being able to click on the notification. Okay, that's not entirely true. I wasn't clicking on it deliberately. The point here is if you see that notification and it's persistent on Windows, not so much on Mac OS, and you click on it, it will automatically take you through the process much quicker than, you know, it will it basically will automatically take you through the process. However, for this video, I want to take through step through the slightly more complicated or slightly lengthier process of doing it manually just so that you see what you're doing. So you want to open the ES Utility app. It's going to be in on Mac OS. It's it'll be in your menu bar. And then you're going to click the button that says pair over Wi-Fi slash LAN. Once you click that, it will bring up another window, and that window is the EOS pairing software window. It will have a list of all of the cameras that has detected on the network. I only have one camera connected to my network right now trying to pair, so there's only one camera detected there. However, if you notice on the back of the camera, it says EOS BED74 pairing connection with the computer in progress. That's not the nickname that I assigned to this camera, which was R5 Cam 1. And if you look at the pairing window on the computer, it just says camera model EOS R5, a MAC address, and an IP address. This is why I said to write down the MAC address at the beginning. Of that, obviously, if you only have one camera, this is less important. But of that, if you have three or four EOS R5s that you're trying to connect or pair on a network at the same time, EOS R5, or you're on a network with a lot of other people trying to connect and pair to their cameras, EOS R5 doesn't tell you anything other than the model of the camera. The IP address is being assigned dynamically by the network hardware, so you don't know what that is because at no point has the camera showed us the IP address that it is at in this process. The only thing that we know for sure in this menu is the MAC address, and therefore that's how we can verify that our camera is what in fact we are connecting to. Now, this is a two-step process, so you do have to click connect here, and then on your camera, it will tell you the computer that's trying to pair for your with your camera, and it will ask you if you want to do that, and you hit OK. At this point, the camera is paired with the computer. Now, you may run into some problems. So let's briefly talk a little bit about some troubleshooting steps that you might wanna take. On Windows, my experience has been, even though Windows has a firewall and it works, this has been a very seamless process for me. On Windows, the first time you run the EOS Utility software, it will the Windows will pop up a thing and ask you if you wanna allow it network access, you say allow, and it all of a sudden just is working. Mac OS makes things, I don't want to say more complicated, but there are a few more options that can get in the way of doing things. So the first thing is, if your camera absolutely cannot see your computer, your Mac OS, your Mac's firewall must not be in stealth mode. So to check this, we are going to go to the Apple menu, System Preferences, Security and Privacy, Firewall, click the little lock down in the bottom left corner of the window, enter your password, Click the button that says Firewall Options, and then uncheck the checkbox that's next to the label that says Enable Stealth Mode. This is the first thing to check. The second thing while you're in there that you might want to do is make sure that the ES Utility is allowed incoming connections. I don't know how relevant or necessary this is, but it is a potential place that you could run into problems. 
So at the top of that window, you will see a box that lists apps that have uh, or that allow incoming connections. In that list, right below it is a plus and a minus. Click the plus. That will bring up a file navigator box. F navigate to Applications, Canon Utilities, EOS Utility on your Mac's hard drive, and then add both the EOS Utility and EOS Utility 3 applications to that list. Now that should be all you need to do to get your Mac uh, or deal with connection issues with a Mac. And generally speaking, that's the only issues that I have ever run into pairing my la or camera to my computer. So I'm gonna wrap this up here. I'm gonna save all the rest of the stuff, as I said, for future videos. This has already gotten fairly long. That said, in wrapping this up, I wanna make reiterate a couple of points. So first of all, Wi-Fi is necessary, obviously for transferring images, but it is also necessary for having full remote control capabilities on the camera. You can release the shutter with Bluetooth, but you can't change any settings or anything like that. You need to go to Wi-Fi for that. Additionally, it is necessary for remote live view shooting where the camera streams the live view to your phone or computer for you to see what's going on. Now, based on my testing from the previous network, as seen here in this graph, choosing the 2.4 gigahertz networks over 5 gigahertz networks provides vastly better performance for your internet or for your wireless connection. So you want to pick a channel that's less than or equal to 14 or between 1 and 14. The channels will be assigned by the wireless network, but I should say, let me correct that. You want to pick the wireless network that is on a channel between 1 and 14 inclusive. And finally, IPv6, while it is the future, it does seem to pose some potential problems as the present on the camera or with various things and so forth. Don't enable it unless you know it is absolutely necessary for you to do so. So this demo obviously really only scratches the surface of all the different things that the camera can do with Wi-Fi on the network. In the next video, I'm going to look at promoting a Bluetooth connected smartphone to having a full Wi-Fi connection without having to go through a whole bunch of hoop jumping to do it. It's actually very straightforward. That would allow you to, for example, have your smartphone set up for GPS tagging and then in a situation realize that you actually want to control the camera with it and get everything set up in the field. In the final video of this series, I am going to take a look at what I call the full simulated photojournalist wire service setup, where essentially I'm going to be dumping images or shooting images and transferring them directly off of the camera over uh, FTPS or secure FTP through a tethered mobile phone to an FTP server so that replicating what you might have or might want to have set up or might have set up if you work for a wire service with a going into a potentially dangerous environment where you might have your camera stolen or card confiscated or something like that. So in any event, if you have a question about something I haven't covered here related to wireless connectivity on the camera, Drop it in the questions below. I can't guarantee I'll have an answer to it, but I will certainly try to answer it. As always, if you found this video useful or at least informative, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you aren't already. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.